Hello everyone, today we're going to be building this music player GUI in Java using the Swing framework. This music player will play mp3 files, you can pause and resume at any point of the song, have playback functionality, and you can create and load a playlist. If that sounds interesting, then consider following this tutorial. I'll also leave the link to the GitHub repo in the comments below, but I do recommend to watch the full tutorial as you'll get a better understanding of the logic flow. As a bonus, I'll show you guys how to customize your GUI towards the end. Without any further ado, grab a drink and let's begin. Now we'll go over the plan of action that we're going to take to get this project done. First, we're going to prepare our project and this just involves downloading the assets and the jar files and then adding the jar files into our project structure. This section, we are going to focus on getting the GUI to look like the one you saw in the beginning of the video. For this part, we're going to create the logic required to play the audio files and handle the pause and resume feature as well as the other features that we mentioned earlier. Then we are going to connect that logic to our GUI so that we can interact with our music player through the GUI. After that, I'll go over a few bugs that I've encountered and we'll solve them together. And that's pretty much it. Also, as a bonus, I'll show you guys how to change the color of the GUI to make it more custom. All right, let's prepare our project. First, we will download the images that we will use for this project. Go to this Google Drive here, which I'll have the link in the description. Now download all of the files here. Make sure to remember where you download these files as we will be needing them later. Once it's finished, it's time to go to the next part. Next, we will be downloading the jar files required for this project. I'll have all the links in the description. These jar files will enable us to play mp3 music and read the properties of the mp3 files such as the title and the artist. So we will be doing the same thing with the other two jars. Now that we've downloaded all of the jar files and the images, let's add them to our project. First, we are going to create the folders that will contain the jar files and the images. For the jar files, we will create a folder named libd in the root directory. Next, we will create a package named assets within the source folder. This package will contain all of our assets, such as the images and the mp3 files. Next, we're going to take all of the files that we downloaded and put them in their corresponding folders. So we'll need to find our project folder. I'm going to paste them here so that I can organize them. So for the images, we're going to move this file to the assets folder. Then I'm going to extract these files into this folder. So these are the images that we downloaded. Next, we're going to place the jar files into the lib folder. And again, we're going to extract the RAR files, and we should have a total of three JAR files. Now we should be able to see these files in our IDE. Next, we will need to add the JAR files to the project structure. To do that, go to File and select Project Structure. A dialog should appear, then click on Modules. Next, click on the plus button and select the JAR option. Locate the lib folder within our project and select all three files. Then click OK, and then apply, and then OK again. And that's it. We have successfully integrated the jar files into our project. Now we can finally start coding.
so we use the invoke later method to ensure that our GUI is executed on the event dispatch thread, which helps deal with potential threading issues like when we're updating the GUI.
So this error happens because we forgot to instantiate the music player object in our constructor. Since we need to access the song title and song artist variables within this method, we are going to make them into global variables instead. We will need reference to the pause and play buttons, so we will be making the playback buttons jpanel variable global. jpanel has a getter method that we can use to access all of the buttons that are stored within it. The way get component works is that we need to pass in an index value. Think of jpanel as an array where we store the buttons into it. We know the sequence of when the buttons were added, so we can indicate which index represents which button. For example, we know that in the first index or the second button is going to be the play button. As well as we know that the second index or the third button represents the pause button.
So now we can only see and select MP3 files. To demonstrate the playback listeners, we will need to connect the pause logic to our pause button. How it works is that when the advanced player's play method gets called, it will also launch the playback started method. Next, when the player finishes or the song gets interrupted like when we pause the song, the playback finish method will be called. So I did notice a bug here where if we are trying to select a song but choose to cancel instead of pressing open, it will still load the song. To fix this, jfilechooser has it so that we can get an int value that we can use to check if the user has selected the open button or not. So we just have to catch this and only load a song if the user selected the open button. So now when we click on a song and then press X, the song won't play. 
and now the user has to press the open button to load the song properly. Now that we have a working pause button, we are going to work on the pause and resume feature. So right now the way we have it is that if we try to resume the song, it plays from the beginning as opposed to playing where we paused it. Fortunately, we have a way of knowing where the song has stopped. So playback event contains a method called getFrame that will return us the milliseconds of the current position of the song. And we will call this method in our playback finish so that we can get the current position of the song when the song has been paused. So here it seemed like they finished at 3220 milliseconds or about 3 seconds. So the idea is we will store this value and use it to play from this position. Advanced Player has another play method that we can use to start the song at a specified position, in this case where we paused it at. Here. We place the value of end, which just means when we want the song to end. Note that the player finishes once the song ends anyway, so I place the max value to capture all lengths of songs. So something isn't right here. The song isn't playing in the beginning anymore but it doesn't feel like it's resuming from where we paused it at. So here's a gotcha from the JLayer framework that we are using for advanced player. The play method is expecting a frame, not a millisecond value. So we have to figure out how we can convert our millisecond value to a frame value. As we can see here, the values aren't making much sense. The thing with play is that it also returns a value relative to where we stopped. So in the beginning, it gave us 3090. Then when we played it again, it resets to zero, but paused at 2370. Let's try adding to the current frame instead of reinitializing it.
that's a little bit better at least we aren't getting a value less than when we paused but it still isn't playing where we paused it at so now we will be figuring out how to convert milliseconds to frames we know that the get frame returns the millisecond value of the current position of the song. So if we multiply this value by the quotient of the total frames of the song divided by the total MS in song length, we should get the current frame which we can use to resume properly. So with the mp3 file object, we can get specific information about our mp3 file. That information being the total frame count and the total millisecond length of the song, which we can use to calculate the frame rate per milliseconds. So I made a mistake here by adding the parentheses, but I'll go over it later. For now, you can just follow what I do in the video. This will be a bit tricky to follow if you aren't familiar with casting. But here I am casting the expression of the uh, get frame times the frame rate per milliseconds to double to get a more accurate value before we cast it to an int, which is the type that we will need for our frame value. So remember that mistake I mentioned? Well, it's causing this bug. Because of the parentheses, the value of frame rate per milliseconds will always be zero. Because by default, when we divide two integers, it will return an int, which always rounds decimals to zero. If the frame rate per milliseconds is zero, then the current frame will always be zero. Casting it into a double will give us a decimal value, which is what we want. Now let's try that again. That is much better. So another bug that I've noticed is that when we try to press play in the beginning before we load a song, we get an exception. This is because we have the play button calling the play current song method, but current song is null, so it returns us the exception. All we need to do is catch this with an if statement. Next, we're going to work on the playback functionality. First, we're going to update the GUI so that it will display the song length.
Next, we're going to work on the playback functionality. This functionality will allow us to play the song at any point using our slider. Within the while loop, we will keep updating the slider until certain conditions are met. For now, one of those conditions will be when it is not paused. We will also need to keep track of the time ourselves as the JLayer library has no way of doing that without changing the code. Remember, our slider will be relative to frames and not milliseconds, so we will need to convert our current time in milli to frames like we did before. To update the GUI in this class, we will need reference to the GUI class. While the slider is now moving, it isn't actually accurate. This is another gotcha with the JLayer library that we are using. So let's test this out by checking the value of our current time in milli and compare this value to the getFrame method, which remember returns the millisecond of the current position of the song.
as we can see here the values aren't matching up i'm not exactly too sure why this is but i do have a solution for it so we are going to have to multiply our calculated frame by a certain amount to make it a little bit more accurate if you guys know another solution please leave it down in the comments as you'll be helping me and fellow developers watching this video so from testing, it seems like 2.08 is a good multiplier to use to increase its accuracy. So yeah, I forgot to also multiply the value from our system.out, so we're going to do that. This is a bit better. It is 100% accurate, but it is close enough. Feel free to do your own testing and let me know down in the comments if you found a better value to put. So now we have to make sure to update the is pause flag to false when the music is played. This is because our update slider thread won't work unless is pause is false. That's odd. Why isn't the slider updating after we resume? Let's debug a bit and see what value the is pause flag is returning. So remember our slider will only move if is paused is false. It seems to be working fine now, but there are situations where it will fail. As we see here, there was one instance where the is pause flag is true, which means that the slider won't update. This occurs because our threads aren't synced. What I mean by this is by the time we update the is pause flag to false, our update music slider thread would have read it as true. So we need a way to make it more synced. Luckily, there's a way to do that. How this works is that given our two threads, play music thread and update slider thread, let's give a scenario where the update slider thread will run faster than the play music thread. When it runs this code, the update slider thread will be paused. As this is happening, the play music thread will continue to execute its code. In the play music thread, it will update the is pause flag to false and then notify the update slider thread to continue. Then the play music thread will just continue. In the update slider thread, it will receive the notify signal and then continue. This process will ensure that the is pause flag will be false by the time we resume our song, making it more consistent that the slider will update.
Nice, it seems to be working as intended. The next thing we'll work on is being able to play the song at any point using our slider. Since we want to update the current time in milli, but we only know the frame, we will have to do some math. We are going to be using the equation that we created earlier, and we're basically going to isolate the current time in milli since that is the value that we want from the given frame. If you are using a different value than 2.08, make sure to use your number instead, or else you might get some bugs. As a reminder, these values have to match. Or you might run into bugs. Next, we're going to implement the playlist feature. First, we're going to be building the dialog that appears when we try to make a playlist.
we can see the modal effect happening here, where we can't interact with the music player GUI until the dialog is closed. Now that the dialog is finished, time to add functionality to it.
So we get this error because I forgot to instantiate the song paths list. So I'm going to add two more songs to make a better example. If you don't have any mp3 files, I upload some on the same drive as the images to download. Now let's work on saving a playlist. Our playlist files will be presented as txt files. So we have to make sure that when we save the file, it will be a txt file. Here, we are just checking to see if the extension of the file is .txt. If not, then we append the .txt to make the save file into a text file.
So this error means that the variable e has already been taken, so we just need to change it to something else. So next we're going to implement the load playlist feature which will play the songs in our playlist.
So this is the playlist that we are going to test on. When we load the playlist, this song should be played first. Oops, it looks like I forgot something. Yeah, it looks like I forgot to call the load playlist method in our action listener. So again, this is the playlist that we will be loading. It seems to be working perfectly. Next, we're going to add the features to switch between songs by pressing the previous or next button.
Looks good. Now let's add some catches so that we aren't going to the next song if there are no songs to go next to. And we're also going to do the same thing with the previous button where we are going to catch the error of going to the previous song when there are no songs to go back to. Next, we're going to code the logic for when the music ends in the playlist so that it will attempt to go to the next song. So whenever we get this type of error, it means that we tried to stop the player when the player has already finished the song. Within the next song method, we do call in the stop song method. So we have to make sure that this is only called when the next button is pressed, not when the song finishes and needs to go to the next song in the playlist. So we'll need to know when the song finishes. Nice, so when the song finishes in a playlist, it will go to the next song if possible. Now we're just going to fix a few bugs that I found. One bug is that the next song method is actually being called twice whenever we hit the next button. <laughs> 
once when we press the next button and the other is when the player is stopped and calls the playback finish method which also calls the next song method. So we will need to make sure that the next song method and the playback finish method doesn't get called when the next or previous buttons are pressed. So the next bug I notice is that when we press either the next or previous button, the speed of the slider increases. This happens because the slider threads aren't actually stopping every time we go to the next or previous song. This means that we will have multiple threads updating the current time in milli variable, which explains why the speed of our slider increases as we make more threads by going to the next or previous song. We can prevent this by also checking to make sure that the song was not finished or either the next or previous buttons were pressed. So another bug I notice is that when we try to load a song after loading in a playlist, it doesn't stop the song and it leads to two songs playing at once. Now the next bug occurs when we do the same thing, but the slider isn't resetting to zero.
Nice, so that was all the bugs I found. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you've noticed any other bugs and I'll try my best to help you out in the comments. If you made it this far, pat yourself on the back because you now have a music player GUI that you made in Java. Leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this tutorial. It really helps out the channel and it motivates me to continue doing more of this. This project was chosen from a community poll I did on my channel. A new poll is out now so make sure to vote what video I make next. Stick around and I'll show you guys how to customize your own GUI with your own colors. So as a bonus, I'll show you guys how to customize your GUI. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is change the frame color and text color variables. And that's it. The way we coded it made sure that every part of the GUI will also change to our new colors. Want to learn more about Java? Then you should try to do this project. I guarantee you'll learn something new.